five to seven minutes? Five to seven. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tolstmaster, fellow Tolstmasters, and honored guests. Not every Marine Corps lieutenant is cut from the same cloth. That is to say, not all of them have earned the word August. I'm going to take you back to South Vietnam, the year 1969, the month is August, and our company is working the Quezon Mountain jungles that surround the Anwa Basin. Our mission up in the jungles is pretty simple. We are to locate, thoroughly search, and then destroy enemy base camps. Now when I speak of an enemy base camp, don't think Camp Pendleton, California. Don't think NPS. These are very small camps, smaller than an average football field. So one particular morning at 0600, our company of three platoons split up and went three different directions looking for base camps. Within a two hour time period, our point squad was standing in the center of, of one of these camps. Our next mission then, obviously, was to search this base camp. One of the things that we looked for in particular were tunnels. Tunnels proved to be a plethora of information with documents. You might run into enemy personnel, medicine, food stash, weapon stashes. So tunnels were very important to find and to search. So we put out a small squad of security around this base camp and we began looking through everything. One thing that struck us right away was that the camp had been abandoned very recently. Small fires still burned with pots of water on them. There were little cans of rice and fish on makeshift tables around the camp. So we knew the enemy was very close by. Our mission wasn't to engage them, so it was our benefit that they weren't there. So we began our search. One of the tools that we would use to search for tunnels was a four foot long piece of re-rod, reinforcing rod. So a Marine would walk along and poke at the ground like this, and then all of a sudden if the re-rod sank into the earth, the chances are pretty good that you just discovered a tunnel. Next operation would be to find the mouth of the tunnel. So you could go in there and search it with a person that we would call a tunnel rat. And the tunnel rat was the smallest marine in the unit, and he would go in there with a pistol and a flashlight and start looking around in the tunnel. So our platoon sergeant, who was Corporal Ira Stone, started putting out the word to, to get in and look for the mouth of the tunnel. But the lieutenant had a different idea. Our lieutenant was fresh out of the United States, He'd gone to basic school at Quantico and advanced infantry training, but this was his first week in Vietnam. A protocol for any new person in Vietnam would be to ask questions before you made any decisions or passed any orders, whether you're enlisted or, or an officer. You would be interested in knowing the, the way it really worked in Vietnam. So the lieutenant, who was a second lieutenant, which means he would carry a, a gold bar on his lapel, which he didn't wear in the field, but we affectionately call that a butter bar lieutenant. <laughs> he got a hold of Corporal Stone, said, well, Iris, this is the way it's going to work. You're going to go around and gather all the C4 explosives you can get. We're going to dig a little hole around that re-rod. We're going to stuff it full of explosives and a couple of blasting caps, and we're going to blow the hell out of this tunnel, and then we're getting the hell out of this camp. So Corporal Stone, being a good platoon commander, or platoon sergeant, disagreed with the lieutenant. He said, sir, you know, the SOP calls for searching these tunnels out immediately, and we need to spend some time here. That's how it works here. The lieutenant said, Corporal, do I need to remind you, I am a lieutenant in the United States Marine Corps, and this is the way it's going to be. But, sir, no but. Let's get this job done. Aye, aye, sir, and Corporal Stone turned away and started gathering up explosives. I was also a corporal at the time, and my job in the platoon was the platoon guide. The guide to make sure that everybody is secure. It would be my job to prep the explosives and put in this hole, and to make sure there was a safe perimeter we could all live by, and then to blow up whatever it is we were going to blow up. So I got as much C4, bricks of C4, as I could from all the guys in the in the platoon, 
There were about 40 of us out there, so we had several bricks. And I stuffed them in the hole. A PFC helped me dig it out. And we rigged it up. I put several blasting caps in there. We wired it up to a low voltage wire. Went back as far as we could. And then attached the other end to the handsets, which we called clickers. Because when you depressed it, it made this clicking sound. And we all got back. Everybody was secure. And I hollered, fire in the hole! And I let it go. Well, as you can imagine, there was a tremendous explosion. I mean, this, this explosion was epic. The stuff just flew up off the ground, trees and little lean-tos, and, and then it hit back down on the ground. And there was stuff falling all over. And then it was kind of, it was, it was wet and kind of raining. And, and you know what? It really wasn't supposed to rain because the skies were blue. It was wet and rainy and kind of smelly. And, <laughs> and some of us were starting to get underneath our our hats so we wouldn't get touched by whatever it was falling from the sky and it pretty soon it dawned on us our our butter bar lieutenant had had us blow up the camp's latrine system <laughs> there was no mouth to this tunnel and of course we we never let the lieutenant live that down he didn't stay with us with us that long in the bush because he made a couple other mistakes along the way that weren't quite as humorous <laughs> and he was sent to the rear to take over the S2 department. For anybody that's not been around in the military long, S2 is the intelligence division in the Marine Corps. <laughs> so, so our butter bar lieutenant became the S2 officer, and that's the end of that story. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, well, thank you Mr. Toastmaster. I'm glad you clarified that. <laughs> Anyway, Pat Lisi today was performing a manual assignment, an advanced manual assignment called The Humorous Speech, and it is out of the Humorously Speaking Manual, as was mentioned earlier. And the purpose of this project is for the speaker to present a five to seven minute humorous speech. The speech's primary purpose is to entertain, while the secondary purpose is to make a point. The speech should be based on one theme or subject with all humorous stories and or jokes related to that subject. The humor should come from exaggeration. Plus, you're supposed to use all these things you've learned in Toastmasters to your benefit. So let's go through and see how Pat has actually done with regard to that. Certainly, we were entertained with this speech. Everybody was attentive. We were listening to every word that Pat had to say. It was an excellent story. We couldn't wait to see how it was going to evolve and what was going to happen next. So absolutely, he entertained us, and that was the major goal of the speech. Now, the second goal was to make a point, and I think the point could very simply be put that before you do something, be sure you know what you're doing. And, and the whole story revolved around the fact of the second lieutenant who gave an order, didn't really understand what he was doing, and the results were humorous. <laughs> so we had one incident, and then because it was one incident, it was hard to have a, say, a series of jokes or humor to make up the speech in that way. And I think that's okay. Because again, the purpose of the speech was number one, to entertain, number two, to have a theme, and number three, related to be, to be funny. Well, yes, we laughed at the end, and we laughed at the incident, and I think for the purpose of the speech, the way it was given, and the, the subject matter, it was perfectly appropriate. You don't need the speech to have laughs all the way through for this particular assignment if you do the sort of thing that Pat did. Now, the Humor was probably exaggerated a little bit, but we were entertained. I don't know how much it was exaggerated, but it could have been uh, definitely in that, that case. And that's what they, they stress. A few things, uh, both uh, good and suggestions, a couple of suggestions to improve. First of all, you used your voice very well throughout the description of the story. And we could relate to the story better because of the way you used your voice, depending on who was talking, and you moved back and forth between the corporal and the lieutenant, and I thought that was very effective. And that moves a little bit into gestures, because you did use that movement back and forth. And you had the, the rebar bar poking for holes in the ground and tunnels. So I can relate to this, because I have a gopher problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, actually hired, uh, I'm actually hired a contractor to get rid of them. And we're out there poking holes in the ground, but we weren't looking for tunnels that big. So also you had talked about the clicker, and you gave an example of the clicker. You also described 
a division of the Marines, the S2 Division. And it was good that you described that, because in the Navy, S2 is entirely something different. It's in the supply department, and uh -huh. help me out, active duty folks, but I think it's the people that feed everybody else, if I remember correctly, with, with S2. So it's good that you explained that. Now, on the other hand, you use an acronym that anybody in the military knows what it is, but others may not. You said SOP, Standard Operating Procedure. It clear to me, but it was indicated that maybe not everybody in this room picked up on that. And Kyle should be yeah. so. Well, remember, we're talking more than just military people here. Also, the one thing I think that you need to do to, if you were going to improve the speech at all is, is a, a, a gesture that you shouldn't use. And that was what we call the reverse fig leaf. Virtually the entire speech, when you weren't making a point like this or like this, you were in this reverse fig leaf. So just be aware that that's the only really thing that I think that you would need to put some attention to. That concludes my graduation. Well,